Now to learn about the dark reaction or the light deep uh, light independent reaction. So what did we learn in the last video? Well, light dependent. What do we get? We have ATP. We have NADPH, and we've generated oxygen as a byproduct. Light dependent takes place in the thylakoid membrane. And now we can start talking about the light independent system. The light independent system occurs in the stroma. Takes place in the stroma. Yes, please memorize it. Don't even wait for me to tell you by now to memorize location. Crucial. Simple multiple choice questions will come from this. Now, something, here's something special about the light independent reaction. For some reason, this word right here can be written many other ways. You might see something called carbon fixation. You might see something called the Calvin cycle. You might see something called the dark reaction. These all refer to the same thing. Don't get confused when it's on the AP exam and you see carbon fixation instead of Calvin cycle or Calvin cycle into the dark reaction. These all mean the same thing. It occurs in the stroma. And now let's start to understand how we do this. So let's refer back over here, ATP and ADPH. I told you that carbon dioxide is, it really needs to get reduced. And we're gonna reduce it by using an ADPH and of course by using ATP. We don't have to understand the entire biochemistry behind it, but we'll understand some very basic stuff. Let's see how it works. Well, okay. All right, so I've, I've generated ATP, I've generated NADPH. How, what goes on now? What happens? Well, you know what? Let's draw back our leaf, a very simple leaf right now. Well, that's obviously a very bad leaf, but whatever, it's okay. So now these pores, these stomates, these, well, that's not stomate. Okay, these stomates, these pore openings, should be open. If these stomates are open, what happens? Well, we can take in CO2, take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. We're gonna take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Remember, there's a huge, there's a high pressure of carbon dioxide, dioxide concentration in the surrounding atmosphere, and it's going to diffuse into the stomates, and that carbon dioxide will be present. And carbon dioxide enters, and this guy, this carbon dioxide, is going to now enter what's called the Calvin cycle. And we're going to just talk about a single carbon dioxide molecule. Let's see what happens. Well, okay, carbon dioxide, it has, well, let me just draw the carbon here, okay? So, one carbon, and this carbon dioxide molecule will be combined it's going to be joined with another molecule called ribulose bisphosphate. Ribulose bisphosphate. Yes, memorize it. Ribulose bisphosphate. It stands for R-U-B-P for short. Ribulose bisphosphate. And this guy right here is a six, uh, sorry, five carbon. Structure, one, two, three, four, five. And ribulose bisphosphate, RUBP, and carbon dioxide cannot just uh, join together. It needs an enzyme, and this enzyme is very, very important. The enzyme that joins these two is called Rubisco. Very important. So, Rubisco will join this carbon dioxide molecule and ribulose bisphosphate molecule and make and generate a six carbon length molecule and this when it's combined becomes a very 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 highly unstable molecule and automatically right off the back as soon as these guys are joined they're going to split apart immediately they're so unstable these guys are going to split apart the six carbon molecules going to split apart into two three carbon molecules molecules of something called pga Two, three carbon molecules of PGA. So I can draw, if you really want me to, I can draw carbon, 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 
phosphate, but understand that, uh, uh, that once these two are combined, it becomes highly, highly, highly unstable and it automatically splits it into half and now we have two three carbon molecules of PGA and this guy will eventually turn into two three carbon molecules molecule, two three carbon molecules, molecule of phosphoglyceraldehyde, PGAL, or phosphoglyceraldehyde, let's write that down, it's important, phosphoglyceraldehyde, it's also noted as G3P, why am I saying this? Phosphoglyceraldehyde, it should ring a bell, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about this compound, we've talked about this molecule in cellular respiration, Remember in glycolysis when we oxidize glucose, what do we do? When we add the initial investment of 2 ATP, we generate what? We split the glucose in half and we generate two phosphoglyceraldehydes, PGALs. Yes, so let's just write that down actually, it's, it's important. This is cellular respiration. Glycolysis, you take glucose, one, two, three, four, Five, six, split in a half, add a phosphate, add a phosphate. This is called PGAL. This is called PGAL. Understand. Phosphoglyceraldehyde plus phosphoglyceraldehyde equals to glucose. Look, we're working backwards now. What do you think is going to happen? Two of these molecules, two of these uh, PGALs here right here, are going to generate glucose. So this is what happens. In the Calvin cycle, this is going to start happening. It's going to keep going until we can now take enough PGALs and generate glucose. So I just told you the conversion factor. Two PGALs equal one glucose molecule. So two PGAL equal one glucose unit. That's a one, not a two. Two phosphoglyceraldehyde equal one glucose unit. Technically, in the Calvin cycle, you're making PGALs, but two of them will generate glucose. Fascinating. This is exactly how we make glucose. Well, I erased the actual chemical equation, but this is how we generate glucose. And what's going to happen? Well, the the rest of the the rest of the PGALs that are not being used are going to now continue the cycle and continue the cycle. And now, once again, we have this, and we can keep doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. This is really a fascinating process. Uh, so let's see. Uh, this is, by the way, PGA stands for phosphoglycerate. Do you have to memorize it? This is probably not, but I, I strongly recommend you understand and memorize PGAL, the entire uh, word. So, okay. This is a Calvin cycle. Understand. Very easy. So what happens, you must have Rubisco. RUBP, carbon dioxide molecules combined together. We have two, three carbon molecules of PGA. It will get converted to PGAL. And now we have two PGALs equals one glucose unit. The end. That's all. But it's not so easy. You're taking your AP bio examinations. Well, I hope that they test you on this because I really enjoy this part right here. The different pathways that these plants need to take to undergo this Calvin cycle. So hold on, the pathway I just described to you is basically the C3 pathway. The pathway I just described to you is basically called the C3 pathway. And you might say, hey, what? what do you mean? Why is C3? Why is it C3 pathway? Well, remember I told you RUBP and carbon dioxide molecules will be joined together and eventually generate a 2,3 com carbon compound of PGA, 2,3 carbon compounds, the three carbons, that's why we label it as uh, C3 pathway. And you might say, okay, wow, man, great job, who cares? Why do I have to know this stupid stuff? Well, here's why. This kind of reaction, this, I just explained to you the Calvin cycle, this pathway only occurs in C3 plants. What is C3 plants? Well, C3 plants, well, I don't know why I erased it, but the C3 plants, C3 plants are in an environment where there's moist, it's moist, it's not, it's not crazy hot, it's not crazy dry, 
And the C3 pathway is also moist and cool. And I'll give you an example of C3 plants. So wheat plants and rice plants. Okay. C3 plants, wheat plants, rice plants, they're moist and cool. They're stomates. Their stomates are open the entire day. Very important. Their stomates are open the entire day. They're moist. They're cool. You might say, hey, hey, hold on. Why am I talking about why am I talking about their stomates? Well, you know what? Stomates has everything to do with what I'm gonna explain next. If my stomates are open, oxygen can leave and carbon dioxide can enter. Therefore, I can continue this reaction or this cycle. What happens when we live in a dry environment, a dry environment, where the intensity of the light, where the intensity of light is also very high? What happens then? Well, stomates also regulate water loss. If my pores are open, and it's very, very hot, what's going to happen? I'm going to transpire out water through my stomates. And if I live in a dry environment, chances are that we don't have rain every other day. And if my plants are transpiring out water, what's going to happen to this plant over here? What's going to happen to this nice plant? It's going to die, okay? It's going to wither and wilt, and you know, everything's gonna shrivel up and die, that's it. I cannot have a, a, a crazy amount of water loss. Stomates regulate water loss. And you might still be saying, okay, I don't get the picture yet. For those of you who caught on, very good for you. Uh, this is, that's actually uh, very good that you caught on. But you might still, some of you might say, okay, who cares about this? Why are we talking about this? Well, hold on. For plants, that are dry, that live in a dry environment, that live in a high intensity light environment, are referred to as C4 plants. An example of these are corn, corn plants. These guys have a different way of, 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 of this counter stark reaction. But hold on, let's see what the problem here is. I told you that oxygen is a byproduct of the light dependent reaction. Oxygen is a byproduct of the light dependent reaction. But if my stomates, once again, these stomates are open throughout the day. These stomates, on the other hand, do you think they're open the entire day? If they're open the entire day and it's really hot and that light intensity is crazy, that plant is going to lose all its water. What do you think is going to happen to the stomates? They are closed. C4 plants have stomates that are partially open throughout the day and closed. So, it, you know, the stomates are not always open. So what does that mean? Well, it means that oxygen, the byproduct we generate from the light reaction, this oxygen is going to be accumulated. This oxygen is going to be accumulated. Very, 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 very important. This oxygen is going to be accumulated. And now you might be saying, okay, man, why do we care about this? Why do we care if oxygen, you know, you're just telling me all this really weird stuff. You know, I still don't get it. Why we have to learn this? Why is oxygen being, I, I care less. Well, no, actually, let's, let's look at this actually. I told you, Rubisco. I told you Rubisco is an enzyme that will uh, take RUBP and CO2 and combine them. So Rubisco generally likes carbon dioxide. And it's true, Rubisco likes carbon dioxide. However, Rubisco loves oxygen. Rubisco loves, and I mean it really, really likes. It has a high affinity towards oxygen. If I have oxygen being accumulated, if I have oxygen being accumulated in these C4 plants, instead of my rubisco binding RUBP and carbon dioxide, I'm going to have rubisco binding onto oxygen and uh, rubulose bisphosphate, and I'm going to generate something useless. I'm going to generate something useless. 
RUBP plus O2 results in a product called glycose results glycolic acid glycolic C O L I C glycolic acid and this acid right here is useless this glycolic acid that is found here is really useless uh, it's gonna get exported out and it's gonna be broken by by, by, by by peroxisomes. We don't need this. This is called photorespiration. Very important. This right here is called photorespiration. Respiration. Okay, photorespiration, meaning that when we have an accumulation of oxygen, we will produce something useless, which is called glycolic acid, and it serves really no purpose. And we want to, you know, this is frowned upon, so we have to do something about this. Because in C4 plants, if I have, if I have oxygen that's been accumulated, I now have to kind of modify my pathway into the Calvin cycle. So in the next video, what we're going to talk about is just modification of the C4 plants, and then we're going to talk about another pathway, which is called the CAM plants.